know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, this is a this is a special show. Um, uh, how what's up, Harry? You good? Because oh, I man, I'm, I'm I don't really want to talk to you. Uh, I haven't Jesus seen Christ, Andre. What the fuck? I, <laughs> what the fuck is I, that I, about? I haven't seen Andre in forever, <laughs> so this is like <laughs> Andre's getting famous, and I didn't. I wanted to talk to Andre. What's going on? Funny. I'm good, bro. I'm chilling, man. Happy to be here, dude. Good to have you here, brother. Uh, all right, and Harry, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of yeah, things Harry. going on, actually. I mean, if we want to get into it, you know, uh, no, nah, we'll but, move right but, along. But, no, but I, but I, but I had. I, so. <laughs> Yo, uh, we got a special guest in the building. I know I've said that a thousand times before, but this time I mean it. Uh, GM Marco in the building. Give it up, yo. Give it up. What up? What up? Fuck, you got his album out and shit. Plug your album first because these motherfuckers need to know what time it is. Yeah, I got a uh, Shelf Life. Shelf Life Amazon special. Just got nominated for an Emmy this morning. Oh, yeah. Performer. Uh, check it out. Check it out. I get, uh, I get one penny if I get a billion more streams. So please. That's dope, man. You gonna go retire soon? It's dope. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. Man, it's good to see you, bro. It's good. To, it's also good to see you because I've watched you grow. You know what I mean? Like I remember when you first I saw you and you stunk, and then and you got real funny now. So it's I love to see that. I, I appreciate it. you've always been nice to me, <laughs> even when I was bad, and that's what you remember. I did look at you like this. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to success and stuff like that anyway let's just talk to andre uh, <laughs> i miss my little buddy Dr. huh guy Man, how, how are you how are you guy buddy well it's it's, uh, it's good it's been a good season i've seen emmy nominations and shit yeah it's just people jim marco's bringing the pain off. bringing the pain <laughs> Dope. I have speaking of that, I went, I drove by uh your sign. Oh, you did. The fucking he got his face in his window. So my girlfriend, she lives pretty close to me. And I got that's a your girlfriend's window? Yeah, well, we live like right by each other, but that's my girlfriend's window. That's even fucking cooler. <laughs> so there's a company that's called Fathead. They were giving comedians a bunch of free shit. So it's my yeah, they hit me up, head man. and it says, follow me. And it's right by the bridge. And uh, uh, it's just this motherfucker's face in the window. <laughs> oh, the like, fat, the fat head where they do like the football players and yeah. shit. Oh, that's oh, dope. Fucking, I don't even know. Yeah, that's wow. <laughs> that's crazy. That shit funny as fuck, and it's just in his win. It's just in the window. <laughs> you could just drive by the highway. Did you get one too, Dre? Yeah, they said they did a the cutout shit like that. And then uh, one that stands up, some six. It looked like me in my room, some big motherfucker that just stand there, and then like a sticker. I just so, put it up. I don't know what to do with it. I might wait until like I have like a, a road thing and use it in that way. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it's big. It's kind of. A, I had them as kids. I had uh, the Undertaker. I had two Undertakers. Oh, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah, time, yeah. I was fucking with Steve Austin, Stone Cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Stone Cold, I have I have at home. So I was wrestling front row. Stone Cold versus Mankind. He poured beer on a Mr. Sacco. He poured beer on it. My oh, dad shit. was like, here, here, here. And we got Stone Cold threw it at us. So I have this oh, shit. beer stained Mr. Sacco. That's <laughs> probably worth nice. 200 grand or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, should, you, you should go to Antique Roadshow and see what it's worth. <laughs> and then That's I did so a show. I'm sure you guys know Mick Foley. He does a lot of comedy shows now. Yeah. I didn't know Mick Foley was did you sell it back to him or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He <laughs> won all the socks back. Yo, what, but what you call it? Um, I was just watching. Um, Fucking Ric Flair, Ric Flair. They've been trying to find Harry. You, they're trying to find the the robe, bl- the black robe. Is it? Is it the yeah. black robe? Yeah, they're trying to find the black butterfly they robe. They're doing a lot of that. Show that what happened? Yeah. That should be a show. Like it is. It is. It, that. That's where you saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Andy is doing a bunch. You about this shit? No, yeah. no. Th- oh. There's a show I saw. Sh- I mean, you know, I, I watch wrestling, but I watch like you know Bob old Backlund. Clips. Yeah, you watch old clips. Chief the J wild Strongbow, Samoans. the Wild Samoans. Yeah, this is why go. I fuck with like I I think Harry would fuck with him too. You uh West Side Gun. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I'm a little the rapper. A little West bit Side Gun. Yeah, I'm a little yeah. Rapper. He what has they- a wrestling company. Really? He has a wrestling. Benny company. the Butcher and them niggas do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they in the same group, but it's really West Side that does the wrestling shit the most. Hip hop. I love the wrestling, play. man. The yeah, Ric Flair he drip. Go the whole hard, thing. bro. For wrestling. The whole thing. They love Ric Flair. They still love Hulk Hogan in a weird way. He's still. Did he come back? Did like they erased him? They yeah, they brought him back. Yeah. They brought him back, and they did it in a very slow, methodical fashion. First of all, they brought him. I think. They brought him when Mean Gene Okerlund died to do the eulogy uh, for Mean Gene. So this right, right. Yeah, it's tough, tough to get mad at the eulogy. Right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then all the canceled people back. That's like black people singing gospel at the Apollo. Yeah. No matter how 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 much you suck, you can't boo God. And then <laughs> That's they <true>. or <laughs> kids. Can't then they God brought him. Kids. Then they brought him back to the Saudi Arabia show. They brought him live in person. To the Saudi, you know, Saudi Arabia don't give a fuck. They don't, about, give, a shit. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about the the racism. So like they <laughs> snuck him back in. So now he's back. But he was at WrestleMania this year. He got booed. He got booed. Oh, booed? oh yeah. People oh, are booing shit. him. The millennials are booing him. They don't they're not forgetting. So good for them. It's a generational thing. They're not letting it go. That shit is out in the ether forever now. I mean, that yeah. organization, you guys saw all the shit with Kenise Mobley, right? You guys know Kanice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? Kinesis, oh, yeah, yeah. She's a stand-up comedian and writer. She was hired by by the, the WWE. And when they hire writers, they, they hired like six comedians. It was kind of crazy. It felt like, you know, they, all these wrestlers going to start talking about how hard online dating is or some shit. Uh-huh. But uh, they hired... Well, you, know, you know, Patrice used to write for them. Really? Oh, shit. Yeah, right. back in the day. writing room, like, though. Is, it, <laughs> is he just like, what if The Rock fucking... Hit him with a chair. Now, like, I well, like I mean, that. I like it that. is. It is. It is. You know, deep, involved relationships sure. and cheating and, and betrayal and all. Kind of, I mean, it's a it's a male soap opera. I'm it's sure it's fun as fucks are right. Yeah. But uh, this is my understanding of it. They they like to have writers who don't necessarily have wrestling experience. Like they're looking for just writers, you know, to to bring in their opinion. And then Kanice happened to talk on a podcast about that she didn't really know a lot about wrestling prior to being hired. Wrestling fans like found the podcast, started being like, look at them hiring someone who doesn't know anything about our our That's entertainment. Bad. And of course, you know, there's there's a there's an energy behind it that you you question, mm, does this have anything to do with it being a black woman mm-hmm. being hired? I don't see this energy being thrust on any other writer. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. you know, these companies, they freak out, they get a little bit of social media pushback, and they're like, All right, we'll just fire them. So they fired her. That's, That's the, worst. the worst. And uh, you know, I hope they get fucking fried for it. Because they, they hired her for no having writing experience that wasn't wrestling experience. Again, this is my understanding of it. But then they fucking, you know, they freaked out because of a couple yeah. racist her, assholes her. in their basement being like, how dare they hire one writer who doesn't know, you know, gold dust's backstory. <laughs> but that, didn't they hire because of that? Are they hired they her because she didn't, yes. It's weird. They have a weird thing over there where they don't want people to be too excited about the product for some reason. It's a very or they odd just thing. want some like fresh voices, like to mix it up. 
Because, you know, fans think that, like, the, if they just listen to the fans, it's going to be great. And that's not always true. That's no, never yeah. true. That's never true. It's never true. I mean, you got to take you got to take in w- what the response is. But people don't know. Come on, Sebastian Maliscalco. Stop it. Well, let's be honest. <laughs> Wait, I mean, fucking he's a, he's hacky. They love him. Shit, I've been a couple specials that I liked. I'd like to that open for him. Arrow shit. I would. I would. I look. I would operate to open for it too. But you know, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that it's kind of a, a mole that comics get in where you know you do this recognition comedy, and the rec- and and it just becomes about that. I mean, Cedric the Entertainer does that. R- um, Russell Peters does the same. I thing. just so, wonder. It's got to be so hard. I'm sure you're like peak fame. And then Netflix is like, hey, can you give us an hour tomorrow? We will give you 10 million for it. And you're like, oh, uh, I, I took a weird shit last night. I could expand to 15 minutes, maybe. Yeah. And so then, you know, his, his last special, he was like, I went to the gym and I'm running on the treadmill. You know? And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, he's like I'm, I'm making dinner and I'm, I'm pitting the cherries. And I'm like, who's pitting the cherries like that? You weren't pitting the cherries like that. <laughs> he does sell the shit out of anything. He's pretty good at that. That I gotta respect. I'm, I'm going to the bathroom. I'm wiping my ass. I'm wiping. Um, <laughs> Relax. It's a regular task. <laughs> that, but they get you get into that nut, that little that little nut, and it's so rich. Like there's so much money because people want to be t- people want to be lied to. They want to feel great, even though they suck. And it's like, you know, the, the Italians that he's talking about, are the, that's the worst of the fucking, just like when you do black rooms, they talk about the worst of, of, of black shit that we, so we can laugh about it amongst ourselves because we get it and it's awful, but it's just, it's, it stinks. I mean, you, you, uh, well, yeah, he's talking about me. So it's, it's because they want that kind of validation you know, it's uh, it's an yeah. easy sell. And then as a comic, because he's a good comic. I, sure. I, as a comic, he's a good comic. But then you get stuck into that and you you can't get out of that. Like you, you're but constantly. Well, he should talk about it. Sebastian should go work some black rooms and try some of that shit. About it, the well, it'll work. Italian shit will work in a black room because, you know, Scarface, all of that. They'll, they'll, yeah, yeah. Like we know like, he, he should work. I mean, I think that's the challenge, I guess. You got to work rooms where either they don't know who the fuck you are. Here's what here's what here's where you get the, the big the big uh, climb. You got to take Mike Kaplan and let him work uh, uh, Uptown Comedy Club. That's if you could <laughs> you could win. Uh, that's opposite. If, yeah, if you could win that, if you could win that, you you learn something. Yeah. And there and there's definitely a code to winning that. There is a code to winning that. But you got to that's you you taking a lot of fat ones cuz especially because the, the you know what I always find in any any group any comedy show that's monolithically ethnic, right? The real point is that you don't have to set up the joke. We all have this lived same lived experience so all i gotta do is do the punchline yeah so it makes it so much easier because you're not trying to explain something to somebody who doesn't already know it you say you gotta get the etamins you know the etamins every they all know the same thing even if that's not your life as if you're like uber rich or uber you know a tech engineer or something you still got people like that you, you still that happens to a comic. It's like no, a, I'm like saying when they, when you do when you that. any 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 monolithically ethnic group. It's like it's like I I remember I was at uh, Brooklyn House of Comedy. Is that the one in in Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah. There was a DJ, and I just went up and the music's playing. And I just did this, and it was just <laughs> ah, and then like, Def Jam ah. I'm already just like boom boom right out the gate, yeah. and it's because I'm like I understand we all I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. That's <laughs> but Dante, you're talking about like not listening necessarily. The audience doesn't always know what they want, right? But that's the same thing with like that thing you said. Like, don't ask women for dating advice, right? You'd always do that. Yeah, I. Always, like, I mean, you don't. As a woman, you go don't ask women for dating advice it's because they. Now you might ask a lesbian dating advice because she's in pursuit like you you can't add you can't what do i say you, you you can't ask the deer 
when you, you, you want to know how to hunt, how to hunt. Yeah. you want to know how to hunt. You ask the hunter. You don't ask the deer. The deer is just being. It just knows that it needs to be there, and it it, it is. It doesn't have to think about it, it about what it is. And so you ask somebody who's been failing, losing, and figuring it out. In, in the interim, because they know the pitfalls. Whereas if you ask a woman, oh, you just, all you gotta do is, I wait, I sit by the bar and I dress up nice and yeah, cause that's, cause we're hunting you. So how are you gonna tell somebody to get somebody who's already sitting at the bar interested? You gotta do something, you gotta ask the person who's doing it or has done it or even has perfected it. You know, what's going on in your head, Andre? <laughs> No, I'm I'm thinking if I ever I like, I gotten if I could get advice from from who like I feel like advice changes depending on who's giving it. You know what I mean? Like maybe if a person's more insightful, they can give Well, I think I think more, you, the hardest like, thing in the world maybe. when you give advice, it's not it, you gotta you have to kind of remove yourself from it and see you have to step in the person. You have to have the empathy to step in the person's shoes and understand where they're coming from. Because otherwise, you don't know if you don't understand, you know, what that person is feeling. You can't direct them in the right direction because you don't know what fear or whatever is stopping them in the first place. So you got to you got to empathize with them in a way to, in order to give them advice. So it's like it's, it's funny because I, I do Jim. I don't know if you know, but I do. I do consulting. Right. Oh, yeah. And one of the dudes who I consulted, well-known comic, I'll tell you who it was afterwards, um, ended up, you know, like ended up in a really bad breakup, like bad with, with a with a comic, a, a, another comic <sighs> and was it was fucked up. And like he really he liked her and he crumbled under the pressure. Call me from. Call me from Edinburgh with yo crying, snot bubbles, the whole shit. Oh, God. And then the funny thing is, somebody else was in that same position, right? And he was like, ah, she's annoying. You know, she's always in a problem. And I'm like, dog, I, you don't remember? Like when I was, I was, I was standing over the well going, grab my hand, let me help you. And you was like, I can. And I was like, come on, just a little more. And then the minute you get up on your feet and your life is dope, you just go, yeah, that's corny. I'm like, son, you like, I seen you at your worst, at your absolute worst. And then not have any empathy to that. That I think that bothers me a lot. Yeah. You know, it, that bothers me a lot because I think even when I, you know, when we talk about being a man and how you grow up to be a man and to be a better dude. And, 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 and I don't mean it toxic. I mean, I fuck around and play, but I don't mean it in a toxic way. You, 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 the empathy of it is more important than anything else. For sure. You know, to know, I mean, you get, you still got to have respect for yourself and your boundaries, but you also has to have to have the empathy about, what the other what the woman is going through what are what are her concerns and so on and you got to still remove the emotion from it and your own ego so that you can you can define what's real and what's really what's really happening underneath you know like if you got if you got a guy and he's you know if he's like you get a guy and he's he's like maybe he's married and he's henpecked and and the the wife is giving him the business and he's and he he's willing to do anything to get that pressure off him that is a that's real a, really an estimation of your character overall because if you do that in your relationship you'll do that in your social life mm. you know if a guy is lying about if he's lying to some chick about um whether or not he's married or what, then he'll lie to you to just all you'd have to do is meet the same desire that he wants to get laid with the desire to fuck you over. And it'll, it, it sinks up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or, um, you look no, baffled. Sure. <laughs> you look baffled. Like something was on your mind. No, no. I was just thinking, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a new relationship now. It's been a long time yeah. since I've been in a relationship. And uh, I think about my dad a lot. My dad was a, a cheater. My dad yeah. is a cheater, stone cold. I never knew about it in the moment. Right. Uh, but 
you know, it's tracking. Like my parents were divorced when I was a baby, but okay. you know, that started cause he was cheating. Right. And then like other relationships, he, he, he was, he was with someone uh, who he had a, my sister with. And then like, suddenly I was like, young, but suddenly she got like weird. And I'm like, looking back, I'm like, and I haven't confirmed this, but I'm like, Oh, he probably got caught cheating. Uh, other relationships cheating. Uh, he was a good looking guy. Dad yeah. was a very good looking dude. Yeah. Uh, and it's just one of those things where I'm like in contemporary society, I'm like, maybe he would have like pursued an open relationship or, you know, yeah, you have yeah. new terms for that. Yeah. They, they weren't, he, that wasn't, there wasn't room for that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, he was Italian and then traditional and imagine and, trying and, to explain that as an old school <laughs> Italian. No, no, it's a thing. Well, we're still <laughs> together. No, they'd be fine with it until you explain the part where their wife gets to do it too. That's when they go. Oh, and we no, don't do no. that. We just do. We do soft swinging. Yeah. And you don't want her to end up with a black guy by accident. You know what I mean? You don't want that to happen. They. Uh, yeah. It's a. It's a. It's funny how how. You know when I'm we fucking first polyamorous <laughs> over here. <laughs> We didn't we didn't you know, like when we first started doing the show, it was everything was very defined in terms of the gender, gender of male, female. And then you then we've had, you know, we've had transgender, we've had gay, we've had lesbian, you know, and every somewhere in between. And and uh, and what you start to realize is there's this dominant and feminine that exists. Even if you, you call it masculine and feminine, but it's really dominant and, and subordinate. And that and the the the, the dynamics of that uh, kind of it lines up in the same way. As long like even so even in a gay relationship, you know who the dominant is and you know who the submissive is, and the same principles kind of work. If 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 you understand like a, a woman will always uh, a woman who is the submissive will always want a strong dude. <laughs> So if she can bully yeah. him around and the stronger she is, the stronger she wants the dude to be. And so if she can bully him around, it's only a matter of time. So she's she's done. She's cutting that dude off because it's not her job is to push him to test what his strength is. And he has to be confident enough in himself, what he does, how he defines himself to go. No, that, that I'm not doing that. Yeah. And it, it's a it's a difficult dynamic. How how's that work in your relationship? I find that I'm, you know, I, I am a, a feminine man in certain respects. So I feel like there is a, you know, sometimes switching of who's more dominant, who's more submissive. But like, I, I certainly know from from dating that where I would meet a certain woman who like wanted a more dominant man. And I was like, you won't like me. me. <laughs> you won't dig me. Yeah. I, uh, I remember once I, I did this show where I, pl I, I did like a play, an interactive play. And I played this Italian Goomba type character. I was replaced by a uh, Vinny from the Jersey Shore. So it was like a okay. masculine role. Right, right. This woman like just came up to me after the show. And I was like a dick. I'd walk around and make dirty lines, all this shit. <laughs> and this woman came up to me like way out of my league. Just a different, just a different world <laughs> from me. And I remember she like, we we all went out to drinks after the show. And I put on my glasses and I put on my button down. I was like, hi, how are you? And I could see just the the, the oh, she was like, oh, this dude is not. And I thought, like, can I stay in character all the way to you know, <laughs> having sex with this with this woman? But I I no, I can't. Yeah. So I feel like there's definitely like I have a I have a very strong Jewish woman I'm dating now, and I I certainly think there is a you know it's a trope a stereotype, but there are the Jewish women. I'm a Jewish man, and sometimes they can be more dominant right. uh, in certain dynamics. So I think there's a there's a little balance I have to find with most of my. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the balance is fine, but it, it's what's interesting is, have you ever said that to a girl like, oh, you just you're not going to like me like you, this? You, have you actually stopped it and said that? I don't know. I think that I think they just I think they are more in a two like they can feel it before I need to say anything. Right. Like they just but you've never not said it. that. You've never said that. No, not directly. I should. I should be more direct. Like, look. That's why you asking, right? Huh? What'd you say? It would work like opposite. If you say yeah, that. because if yeah, you say that, it. then that makes you dominant. The the, the see the the, the 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 confidence is not really what you perceive it as as this Italian goomba. In fact, that guy 
a lot of times is one of the biggest pussies in the world. I mean, you know, you, we what was it? Uh, casino It's like Cameron, Cameron, put the put the gun down. You know, like it's that that begets that because you're not really that guy. Like they they I think they smell the authenticity of it. But when if you initially said, yeah, you you looking for some dude that's like because that's kind of what Andre does like you you looking for dude with problems like <laughs> <laughs> like you want problems you want drama i'm nah i'm not i'm not fucking, yeah. like, which which is you know he doesn't have andre doesn't have that kind of feminine energy but the fact that he's willing to go yeah you you're not good enough is the thing that flips the whole dynamic around you know what i mean and I, i'm not even trying to say that they're not even good enough it's just like i'm not I'm not interested in the lifestyle that you that you want. yeah, which is not. I mean, so, it's, 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 I don't want about that. my business. I don't want like, that. <laughs> I don't get down like that. I want better for myself. I don't want your man. I don't want to have to look. I don't want to have to get up and get in my car and the the butt of your man's thirty rusty thirty eight is on my temple. He want to know Ooh. why I'm <laughs> why I'm in the project. I don't want none of that. <laughs> I let it be known, yo. I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, we not. Yeah, I had a I had a dude call me from uh from England. Uh, did a consultation with him from England. And he was like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a D he goes, I'm a DJ. I'm I'm you know, I'm really working on my career. Like eat one of those huge EDM dudes. Like when yeah. he, so um he goes, I met this girl. She approached me. Um, and everything's been cool, but we kind of keep it moving because I'm focused on my career. And uh, she hits him up about that her ex boyfriend, who's a little crazy, might uh, is in town, and we need to you you know you should if he tries to follow you on Facebook, block him or some shit. And the dude was I'll like, block "Look, her. right, right." That would make me block you. I'm not talking to you no more. <laughs> now, see, so when the is... homework pop up, I'll be like, son, I've been block shorty. You ain't got to worry. My, I have no... You uh, got it, bro. You fucking stupid. I, you know, this back in the days when I was dancing, I used to... I had a, a bunch of different times to do it. Get my business card. He'd be like... Yeah, motherfucker, you better watch out messing around with Michelle. And I was like, who? Bird he's people. like, he's like, Michelle. I was like, dog, I know like 20 Michelles. He <laughs> goes, you know who the, she, she had your number. I was like, dog, you, you wildin'. Like, I don't even know you're broad. Like, why are you? And they, oh, you watch out. I'm going to kill you. I'm like, nigga, you ain't doing nothing. You're coming on calling. You're going to kill me over the phone. Shut up, stupid. But they would call up and get the number. And then that's the, but the, 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 the strength in it is in what Andre was like, no, I'm blocking you. Uh, uh, you come, the drama comes with you. But anyway, this girl, what this girl does is she, they argue about it a little bit and then she hangs up the phone on him. And I'm like, he goes, you know, but I, he, I go, he goes, and I called her back and then we talked and she said she was busy. She had to go to work, but I'm supposed to see her in two days. He goes, what do I do? I go break up with her immediately. He goes, he goes, well, you know, I said, did she, did you call her back or did she call you back? He goes, I called her back. I go, do you know, did you, did she get disconnected or did, you know, I'm still being reasonable that it wasn't a straight. And he goes, he goes, nah, she, she definitely hung up on me. And I said, well, when, so, and, and this is what I keep talking about the subtext of understanding what the subtext is or in the bigger picture. She, so she got upset and she literally said that I don't care what's coming out of your mouth. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to hang up with on you. And if you never call again, because I know you are going to call again, you ever call again, I have the ability to be abusive to you at any time that I want. And he goes, I said, I said, well, you have to ask yourself if are you willing to be disrespected every time and any time she wants, whenever she wants, whether or not it's reasonable or not for the rest of your life? He goes, no, nah, I, he says, I can't. No, I couldn't. I go, well, that's why you have to break up with her. So 
and I, one of the things I say is you, you, you have to lead with actions. Like we, we get, we're in such a place where because everybody's in therapy, everybody's talking about their feelings. When you did this, this made me feel this and this, the, the, but half the time people are lying about what their real emotions are because they haven't really explored it in the first place. If I go, if my, my movement is, okay, uh, I, we need to not be together. And she says nothing. Right. She goes, fair enough. And keeps moving that that movement, her not going, hey, I, I want to work it out. Nothing that tells you everything that you need to know. She don't give a fuck about you. Uh -huh. Her movement of breaking up says this is unacceptable. Her movement of not responding back says I don't give a fuck about your boundaries. So whatever the fuck you trying to do. And I don't think you're worthy of fighting for this. So your her her move. So the subtext is. I'm breaking up with you because this is not this is non negotiable to me. And her non response is I don't give a fuck about what your boundaries are. And then you call back and you go, hey, you know, we should this and, blah, 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 blah. and then you start talking again. Understand the deal that you made up front. Anytime she's angry, she could even whether it's whether it's reasonable or not, she can hang up the phone on you at every given time. That's what you're signing up for. I go, now, if you go, I'm done. This is non-negotiable. And she goes, well, I, what do you mean you're done? How, how are we, we? I mean, I love you. I, I want this and that. Now you can have a discussion, but you're now you're negotiating when you know what your leverage is. If you go in going, well, if you do this, then I'm going to leave. You're, you're negotiating without knowing your leverage. And in any business, you always want to know what your leverage is, what your in is. And the fact that she's willing to fight for you tells you that you matter. And now you can negotiate. You can say, well, listen, is this this hanging up shit? I, I, if this is what we're going to continue to do, if you think that this is OK, then we can't be together. Yeah, yeah. Not, it's not about the hanging up. Well, I, had a, I had a hang up with uh, I had a big, you know, I think I could talk about it. It's cool sure, now. Sure. I, my, my girlfriend, she had a she had a birthday and, uh, you know, we've had a lot of stand up comedy booking. It's not it's been, it's easy, been blowing man. up. Yeah. It is fucking hard. These conversations are hard because, you know, my mentality is like, I got to do it. And if I, I turn down a spot because we're getting dinner and then I see Usama Siddiqui took it, I'm like, fuck, man. <laughs> Usama's going to just, just floor me. He's doing yeah. five times the spots. And yeah, so yeah. I ran to Usama after a show one night. He was like on, on his phone with it, some girl he was seeing and they were fighting about something. And I was like, I was like, all right. So we're all having these. We're all having these conversations. <laughs> well, you, I mean, the thing is, you, 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 I, I mean, I could, I could definitely, yeah, I mean, Harry don't have this problem, but I, ha, Dre is a nigga to go. This, look, this comedy thing, like you can't, here's what I used to say back in the day. What did we say, Harry, before? Stop making comedy you your side don't bitch. Don't make comedy your side bitch. Don't yeah, make treat it like it's your side piece. Sure, but my 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 regular bitch is, is mad she is a side bitch to comedy. It's tough. Well, you know how, you know how it is like, first, I think I learned birthday that I can I'm take a couple <laughs> days of the year and go, no. Right. Unless the seller wants me to audition, mm. no. But it's hard, you know, because I, I tell her all the time, like, listen, I'm at the mercy of some really shitty people. So I know that, like, you made you made a delicious dinner and I told you my spot was 910. Well, guess what? I got there. Show didn't start until 910. I'm going up at 1030. I'm getting back at 11. I'm pissed off. My night got fucked. Right. Yeah, and yeah. like, I know you're mad. But just so you know, I'm upset already because I got fucked by the people up here. This is not my doing. And it's right. tough. It's it's tough. I don't have that experience. Yeah, but you know why you don't have that experience? Because right out the gate, you was like, dog, if before there was the lovey dovey, I love you, it was like, look, if you can't rock with this, yeah, understand I introduced it like oh out the gate. I, I remember like in, indoctrinate. I was like, this is a I live a certain lifestyle. Yeah. I, I want to let you know up front. Like I I put Andre up, like, talks about it like he's fucking Bane, you know, like I always <laughs> I, for real though, when you bro, I, I was, was born, born in the, in the darkness. darkness. <laughs> there was a difference. There was a time when I had like I remember going to school and having you know working a side job and then doing a couple spots, and then I then I remember what it felt like when suddenly 
I noticed I started to get home at like 4 a.m. every night. Yeah. And then I noticed I would my productivity hours was get up at 12. And, and then the things that I had to do was different. Yeah. So my my wait, wait, what do you mean by that? Like, like I remember like 2012, I had to, I had to go to school. I had oh, okay, to okay. Are you still uh, in high school? In at this. Yeah. No, no, no. I was in the community college by 2012. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I graduated in high school in 2010. Okay. So I, like I was like the my had to list where I had God to. Damn, in. I had I had 10 years. When you was when you was graduating, I had yeah, ten man, I, was, I was fucking. Uh, I'm a baby <laughs> at that point. Right, right. But yeah, I remember where the switch was. Of today, my list of things that I must do is these three spots. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what the thing is uh, to do, Giamarco. I think the thing is, um, how how kind is it for? It's so much kinder to tell somebody, look, I love you. And but I this I love this more, right? <laughs> well, that's, well, that's the struggle. I think there's yeah. a feeling of like, you know, being second, and it's really it's. And I bring it's, up this stuff too sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, totally. I'm, that, yeah. I'm not making this world up. This is a really uh, this is a different world. I'm gonna yeah. show you. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, you I took my own eyes. Since you said you off today and tomorrow, you can stay out like I stay out. Come see how I live. Well, and, you and know what? Was, I used to <laughs> I used to take crazy dawn out. And I used to date this insane. I took her out and I one night I had six spots like she was in the car sleep after the third one. I got like, three more what? joints. You only want to come in. You just recline the seat. You ready to go to sleep. I got three more spots. Then we got to get food and we got to get home. Like you thought I was oh. making this up. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah. Last night I was at a, a club here in Los Angeles. Right. And uh and I went on and like I wasn't supposed to go on. I did one show and I just stopped by to hang out. And they go, you want to go up? But, you know, we'll put you on at the end. I mean, they did a long ass, like almost three hour show of and it wasn't all great comics, but she was there with me the whole time. And I was like, you know what? I'm glad you're here. So you know what this is. See this because, shit. See this shit, because this is not just because people get this idea that is hanging out. Like when you say I'm hanging out. It's yeah. like hey, everybody. They think it's, because it's like you're smiling at work, it's, it's not working. <laughs> anyway. Right, true, right. That's true. I'm watching bomb Yo, after know, bomb after I know bomb. Porn, I know porn stars that don't want to go to work sometimes. Though. You be oh, like, no. uh, I mean, that one I'm gonna understand. That's work right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's talking the fuck in, bro. Fucking somebody you don't want to. Sometimes I watch right, come I watch on. once in a while, like it's porn bloopers. Yeah, and, like, that's mad <laughs> funny just to say. <laughs> you really like get a sense of like, oh fuck, that's work. Yeah, yeah, like damn. You see when they like when they're not fully into it or acting it up, you're like, oh, you just have to get pounded. Yeah. 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 This guy's gotta stay hard for fucking for so long. That's a shift, bro. That's a shift. Yeah, yeah. They turn around and then then when it if it does feel good, you gotta change positions. You're doing that. Yeah, the, behind the back. There was a couple where the guy, you know, he he finishes too fast, and I'm like, oh man, can you imagine finishing so fast? And the whole crew goes, oh, oh here we go, uh, we gotta shoot uh, this shit uh, again. We're going into OT. God damn. It. <laughs> yeah, and that's pressure to have to like everybody's got to wait while you reload. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't, you know, it is a they some dudes. Some of those dudes are. I remember Motor Monster was like they do a they'll do a liquid fucking viagra and shoot it in the base of their dick oh i do not like that it's like I so like well. sign up if you wanna <laughs> Duncan, you the focus oh you got yeah, the focus sorry yeah and remove that up. background of you can please you don't like my background I no feel it like makes I'm it makes it news. look like it's an algerian telethon <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have an actual studio we have an actual <laughs> i'm gonna play that goofy horn i mean you look like <laughs> you're doing the five o'clock news in uh al jazeera or whatever <laughs> here's that's better that's your kid uh, but it's still, uh, all right, I'm moving, I'm moving. i love dante little dante you got an actual recording studio he the reason people use digital me... backgrounds is because they don't have a good background you have an actual recording <laughs> studio Yo, dante didn't i don't know <laughs> if i didn't tell you Don, little dante he said he don't want to be called dante no more he says just call me don so wow <laughs> Jesus. and he's um he got his resume out it's extreme for a two-year-old. Yeah, he, <laughs> his resume out. He's got a couple couple nibbles, but they don't want to come in at the right money. So, <laughs> uh, 
that little dude. He big. What well, what you call it? Just saw him a couple weeks ago. Ooh. Dre came over. Yeah. Oh yeah, a couple days ago. He's a big baby. This kid is gigantic. That's how he's ready. Yeah, he was wilding out. But yeah, the um, the the you can't make it. You can't make comedy your 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 side. But bitch. whatever it is, you can't. I mean, if it's your you gotta career, be honest about yeah. it. No, and I don't get me wrong. First of all, I think she's pretty pretty good in general. It's more just like you got to make up for it in other ways. You got to be really caring, or you know, the, if if nice. Yeah, but don't you want to? I mean, if you like her, don't isn't that what you want to do anyway? Yeah, That's yeah. Not funny, you said I have three spots this week. I gotta hug this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I gotta, That's I gotta two extra hugs. God damn! I gotta, I gotta go down a little bit longer than that. <laughs> I, I gotta do a hug and two forehead kisses while she's sleeping. That is, damn, I stayed out long. Dang, damn, yeah. I used to make the. I used to make the. Um, you know, make have that. Yeah, make the be in my head and. Da, 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 da. And then I was like, Doug, when you, you know, what does she do for a living? Well, she's a she's a very successful comedy manager, so she knows. Oh, so oh, yeah, you can't even. She knows, don't get me wrong, she knows, she knows, and she's very, she's very like I, I, I. See, here's the thing. Be like, the every thing. time she asks or brings it up, you should just give her like that straight face of you, the, the fuck. You know what we do? Here. You know what it is? Come on, it's not about that. It's not this about is like that. Doc Rivers not, wait, wait, I, I want to hear what you training or some shit. Like you were basket, <laughs> you train. What the fuck? No, she gets it, and she does. I do. Th I think it's just a matter of like. There's like a birthday is a special day or I need to like, just just be able to be like, look, we're not going to have romantic nights. Let me give you a romantic morning. Let's have a nice. Let me take you out to a nice breakfast. Learn, let's take more brunches. You know that that's just what I'm figuring out. It's a new relationship. Yeah, and I don't to be selfish as a comedian, but I do think that you know you have to figure out ways to make the other person. But it's safe. not selfish, dude. It's really not selfish. It's the, it is your job. If she was a nurse and she, or, or say if she was a firewoman, right? If she was a fireman or whatever, you got you on the wheel. You go in when they tell you to go in. If you're if you're what you call it? Like, if, like I know a girl, I was counseling this girl, her, her, her boyfriend's is a DT. He's got to go beat black people. It doesn't matter what the fuck Wait, happens. What? That's his job. He's got to go DT? and beat. beat. Gotta DT. He got to beat, beat. What is a DT? I see. No, no, he's a detective. Oh, detective. Okay. He's yeah, a yeah. detective. He's got to go out, harass and beat black people. And that takes a lot of time. Yeah. If you if you don't if you can't get down with that, I'm not the guy for you. <laughs> yeah. we, we just don't fit. But if you if you had a job, any job that you have, like mechan like a, not even a mechanic, but like fireman, when you are a probie, you you work around and you go three days on and two days or two days or three days I off. That, bro. I really do believe everything that if you do it to the, the top of the, the it's, line, you aim it's, it's you gonna yeah. have a lifestyle that comes with it. Of course. Like now that I'm like, I, like I remember when I first started, I started comedy at like 18. So I remember the other friends that was in different pursuits. Yeah. All young, and then 10 years later, how it looked and how they live. Whatever the fuck they pick, really does come with a whole separate lifestyle. They wake up at a different hour. They, yo, they, it's a when, whole when thing. I, when I when I was stripping. I didn't have sex with women until after two and before eight. <laughs> A lifestyle. I, but I remember, <laughs> I remember reading uh, Hugh Jackman, who is a performer. Like he takes Mondays off. Like it's a hard yeah. off. There's yeah. nothing he will do. Right, right. Ever. And obviously he's at a place where he gets to tell, you know, you move. could do that. I'm not filming Mondays, but I'm like, I know that this rule came from like a similar conversation I had with my girl on her birthday. <laughs> like, listen, bitch, you got to take Mondays off, Hugh. I don't I think, think they're right, this. though, with that, man. Like, what do you mean? That's yeah. balance. Because yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, bro, that's, you, that, you, that's what I mean. You end up on the other side of it where you, you could be a comic or whatever person that... <laughs> Just do whatever the pursuit is to the point that they don't have nothing to recall from. There's no life lived. All your stories are like this audience member came up to me after yeah, a it's show. Just bullshit. It's just like, damn, son, we yeah. never had a 
emotion? You never yeah. lived? What the fuck? What are you talking yeah. about? Gia Marco, what you was going to say? Audience member came up to you and said what? I'm saying like, that's like, you do stand up and that's all you do every night for your whole life. All your jokes. Oh, yeah. Like, crazy audience member. And I was doing this show. Yeah, I was, I was in this. When I, said I was this in joke. this. I was in this hotel in this strip mall waiting to do my gigs. And I went to Blimpy's. You and know, I, I mean, you can relate to this shit at yeah. all. Uh, other than comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but I, it's interesting. My friend, my friend Kenny Ortega, rest in peace. He yeah. took his Mondays off, and he was like, "Take, take a day off," because I was crazy, you know. I, when I was when I got started doing check spots at LOL, I must have done every check spot there for a year, uh, and uh, you know, so all my jokes were like, "Hey, yeah, you ever you ever doing some jokes while people are getting their checks?" <laughs> the audience was like, "No, we've never experienced that." <laughs> like that type of stuff, I attribute to like a, a growth pattern. Like there's a time frame. Yes, where that's necessary. And then you yeah, and then you get a chance, but you it. earn that. Yeah, you earn yeah. that ability. It's like yeah. a thing you need to go through and then you hit the next stage and you can change the mod- you know, change yeah. the game or something. But you know, we made it weird. You know, we took this long swath of time off and like we're all kind of we're I still feel like, you know, I'm still like getting back in the thing and figuring out where my place is now. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I felt like pre COVID, I was starting to get to a place where was like, okay, maybe I can take Mondays off. And then we, you know, a year later, I'm like, yeah. Oh, I can't take a moment off ever again. Cause the yeah. Delta variant is coming soon and I got to get the <laughs> now. Yeah. You got, but you earn that. You earn the ability. Like, you know, like I, I don't, you know, you know, who Danny Howick is you familiar with who Danny Howick is. I don't think so. So years ago, he did a he did a one man show that blew him up and he was on like sketch shows and stuff. You'll see him every once in a while playing a dick in a movie somewhere. But um, he w- he got the the there was the 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 pool boy episode of Seinfeld. OK, uh, so he was supposed to play it and they wanted him to do it with a Spanish accent. And he was like, um, Yo, why is he gotta be a you know like why is he gotta be a Spanish dude on the towel boy like uh, look can, um, we just wanted to he goes like you know it's kind of and this was years ago I mean this was probably two thousand five so there was none of this you know like how what you call it you you heard with the what happened with the um the heights with um the yeah, dude yeah. from in the, the heights with Lin Manuel yeah. Miranda so Lin Lin got. He got smoked because he hired the Heights is in the Dominican neighborhood. They're all Afro Latinos. They're all dark skinned Afro Latinos. It's very rarely you have white skinned. And all the leads were were light skinned Puerto Ricans. And and to be fair, there's there's a lot of there's some Jews there now too. I didn't see any Jews. Didn't yeah. see any homeless people either. In the yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see a lot more people in the streets. Yeah, but it's it's <laughs> it's it was initially it was like this Dominican story, and then you yeah. you know it's the like back in the days they'd be like, shut the fuck up. You ever see Charlie Chan, the old black and white oh, Charlie Chan? Door. I Charlie, seen him. Charlie Chan used to be a white dude. They used to take Scotch tape and just. Oh, Tape his eyes up. That's the breakfast at like Tiff's. Yeah. Say again. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Breakfast at Tiffany's. That's, no, that's Mickey, Mickey, Mickey Rooney. Break- no, oh, no, okay. no, no. This is this is not Chinese. Yo, oh yeah, it was like, Chinese. <laughs> Yo, the other dude, the dude who always plays the Indian, the Indian, the dude Four with Steven the Seagal movie with the tear. The, 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 you know the. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It'd be white dudes in okay. black face with, with mops on their heads. <laughs> Where was this? What's that? Uh, Mark for death. Oh my god, really? Mark like, for god death. Damn it, man, you in New York. This magic making around. <laughs> Chief J Strongbow. Remember Chief J Strongbow? The rest of yeah, don't He's tell Italian. me. Italian. Uh, so was the guy, you know, the the, the litter Indian the litter Indian campaign, with the, the single that campaign, dude was yeah. Italian. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, you were getting into of, something, Dante. I oh, don't know why. Oh, um, Danny Ho- Hoick or whatever. So Danny <laughs> Hoick went to, but that's what it was getting to. They wanted him to do Spanish, dude. And he he did. So he says, all right, do, you know, do it the way you want to do it. Chopped him, went and got a Spanish dude. Never aired, never called him nothing. Just fired him on the spot. Let him do whatever he wanted to do. Fired him and just didn't put it in and never hired him again. Brutal. So it's you. You earn that ability to take off and still sure 
and well, still I, like <laughs> i think the interesting aspect of it you talk about her being a manager right so she knows the comedy business but she's still maybe it's not yeah, it's not even an issue about knowing it, it. But it's but about what what quick if she listens to this uh, she is a wonderful wonderful lady I i'm just, just saying she's I not just, no no it's is, i'm saying like understanding it makes sense but understanding no, yes or no does not mean you don't feel the human emotion of sure. yeah absolutely okay. no no doubt but i but think it has, angle, it has on, less the, to do with understanding it has less hold to do on, with understanding hold on, it. Me, and Ray, i want to hear what you have to say it's good oh, it has less to do with understanding it but more with maintaining what it is because you could say it all day it's like anything even with your kids you're like hey don't do that you're going to be in trouble but if you don't set the boundaries or your system consistently then it comes up again. It doesn't mean that the person isn't nice or they're not wonderful, but they want something emotionally. Like I would want him to spend more time with it. So if you don't establish like, Hey, this is what it's going to be. It will come back later on at times. Like it's just consistency. Yeah. Is the way and, make it, and make it worse than it is. So that if you find a, a crack in the, in the, in the pavement where you could grow a little rose up and do something a little special, or take like, I, I, I be like, yo, this is how it is. It's like, if you can't, then you got to bounce. And then I would show up on a Saturday. Hey, what, what you, I was just, I would go by and she would go, well, you don't gotta, you ain't got show. You don't gotta go. No, nah, I'm just hanging out with you. Um, we're going to go. We got reservations. Blah, 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 blah. And then I do it like that. But I don't do it like I don't want you to think I got to do it. And I want you to yeah. appreciate when I do it. So I, she was like, you don't have to go now. It's almost not like it's not. No, no. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm, this is our day. Then she's like, are you sure? Are you, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. So whenever I don't have spots, I'm like, baby, I want to do this for you. <laughs> uh, uh, like, hey, if any dropouts, I'll be there any second. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you know, it's a, but you, you earn that. It's like it, it gets yeah. to a point where you're, you're so you, you need to be honest about what the, what the game is. You, you, yes. you got to be honest about what the game is. If you're honest up front, then you don't have to wiggle it. Now, the emotions, just like what you said, the emotions are, are are there so you can't you can't ignore that those are emotions but the, the the boundaries stay the same based on the emotions the empathy about the emotions is is i think sometimes people just want to be seen they just want you to know that you see them that you understand that th this is how they feel yo um let's we want to let's end this we're going to do something back behind and finish finish this conversation but we're going to do it on the patreon can you hang out for a little bit yeah i'm all good uh, all right, let me uh, plug your uh, social media and all your good stuff. Please, I'm uh, at John Marco Cerezi. Just look me up in the show notes. It's it's John Marco Cerezi on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. And check out my special shelf life: Amazon, Spotify, everything. Dope, 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 man. Uh, I saw parts of it, man. Most most of it, uh, and I really enjoyed you, man. You. Really fucking. Um, Dre, talk to me. You're just you know andre d thompson slouch theory that's it yo link that's all while well, sending you getting ready to do big things uh all day every day harry uh you go to all my stuff at harry turjanian and then just follow man school on youtube that's the big one youtube and instagram harry also doing some big things now things are quiet we got some crazy things going on mm. uh check me out everything dante nero y'all know the podcast man school 202 on youtube um follow me on instagram follow me on youtube i'm gonna start putting a lot more content on youtube gybb get your balls back wwdd what would dante do the sexual revolution is being podcasted we are out man i love y'all peace Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.